Hello everyone, I'm Jorge Arteiro from the Cloud Native Advocacy team at Microsoft. I'm going to talk about deploying.NET Aspire projects to Kubernetes, specifically to Azure Kubernetes service. Let's get started. The first thing is let's recap dot, what's .NET Aspire. We're going to focus today on .NET Aspire deployment specifically. But don't forget, .NET Aspire is about observability with open telemetry, about resilience, scalability, and all running locally. And why deployment? I'm, I work with the Cloud Data, I work with Azure Kubernetes Service Team, and we're going to see how can we get your .NET Aspire project, the app host project, and we deploy these on Azure Kubernetes Service. Remember, you can deploy a .NET Aspire project using Azure Dev CLI or through Visual Studio. But we're going to focus on a specific tool for Azure Kubernetes Service where you can generate some of those manifests for Kubernetes, the tool called Aspire 8. We need to see that on the documentation as well. Let's go for that. The first thing, let's get the code, GitHub.net presentation, let's learn .NET Aspire. Let's jump to my code. And that's the, the source code. I'm going to use the solution inside the folder complete, the full solution with app host, the front end, the web hub, and the API backend. We also have uh, Azure Kubernetes service. We're using AKS automatic, that's in preview, where it's fully managed. You don't have to care about your workloads. You're going to create the nodes dynamically for you, and you're going to scale down when you don't need that. That's the new option I recommend you to have a look. It's very simple as well. And we're going to follow the documentation to deploy using Aspire 8. Have a few commands like initialization, generate the manifest. They can generate Kubernetes YAML files, or also can generate uh, Helm. Or you can um, apply and destroy those manifests through the command line tool as well. This tool was done by third part and if you uninstall, we do .NET to install. Aspirate is a pre-release version that you can install and also update. I'm going to use Helm. That's another tool for Kubernetes. You can install on Windows or, or Mac. And I'm going to use Headlamp. Headlamp is a nice IDE that where you can watch your cluster and you're going to look at the AKS automatic cluster that we have running here at the moment. To get started, we're going to open the project to Visual Studio. And like I said, I have my app host. And the application is pretty much the front end, web application, um, the API, and also we're using Red's cache or the caching of the page and the API, we're using Red's cache there. Then I have those three components. I'm removing the Red's commander because we don't need for this example. And if I run this, I can run the application locally as usual, um, and you can see the dashboard and everything, but we want to run this on Kubernetes. How can I do it? The first thing you have to do it is using the Aspirate. Go for the command line for the admin host project, and you're going to run Aspirate in it. You can initialize your admin host project with Aspirate. They're going to ask you a few questions. The first question is, when you want to use another hash tree? I'm going to use my local Docker desktop. Remember, we need Docker desktop or another uh, engine to, to run. I'm using Docker desktop. And we need um, this to run um, .NET Aspire. And I'm going to use the local one. means that I'm not going to set any other hash tree. You can. Uh, and I'm going to set a specific prefix because my Docker hub is called Jorge Artero. And all my image, Docker image will be starting with the name George Arteiro slash something. You can use your Docker Hub, for example, or your container registry. And I'm also, I'm not going to select a specific folder. I'm going to use the default folder where the, uh, the manifests are going to be generated. And that's it. With this one, I have inside my project, uh, aspirate.json. Okay, if we have the, the registry settings will be here. Otherwise, you're going to use Docker and my 
my all my prefix will be using my Docker Hub. What's the next step? Next step is to the same command, but now we're going to generate the default be YAML files, Kubernetes YAML files. They're going to ask you, just like a password, could be anything just to encrypt possible um, secrets that you have on your application. You do twice, could be anything. I'm going to be saved, I'll be just locally. And they're going now to generate the manifest. Take some time, they're going to also ask you which watch components you want to do it. I'm going to select all. You can pick if you don't want to do caching, for example, you want to create Red's cache on Azure, that's fine. Otherwise, you can run Red's cache as a container as well inside Kubernetes. Then they ask me, do you want to do the Aspire dashboard? Yes, I want to deploy the Aspire dashboard as well. And then they're going to do .NET Publish. Why? .NET Publish, you can create the container. They're pretty much creating the API container, container image, not the container instance. And I pretty much those two images here, API and my weather hub. Seven seconds ago, they recreated the image and they're going to do for both API and for the weather hub as well. When both are done, I recommend to you to always to set for hours. I always put the image because Kubernetes sometimes when using the, the tag latest, if you don't do that, any change on your applications are going to be redeployed. You want to deploy uh, on a custom namespace, yes, I'm going to set a name. I call this Weather Hub. Otherwise, if you don't set this namespace, you're going to use the default namespace on Kubernetes. And the last one, if you want to create um, a top-level customize, I recommend you to keep yes. And after that, all your configuration is done. We have a new folder, aspirate.output, where all the deployment YAML files are created for each one of the servers and also for the dashboard. You have the manifest.json file that describes pretty much like a Docker Compose file, all the servers. And this manifest file is used by the Aspirate to, to create the YAML files and now the Kubernetes uh, manifests. You have the state where they keep all that configuration that we do on the command line that you don't have to do again and again. And you have the aspirate with the prefix and the first initialization that you do. Next command I have to do it is apply those configurations. You have those configurations there. If you apply, what's going to happen? You're going to apply each one of those manifests for each one of those servers. And you want to keep the same configuration we did before. We type the password that say password we used before. We keep yes. You're going to handle all the deployment to the cluster. And then we're going to select the AKS automatic. Using the context that I have already my connection to my cluster from my Docker desktop. And we should now have all these applied on my cluster. If I go back. I guess automatic. Yeah, what's going on at the moment is um, the deployment is pending. Why is pending? Because the cluster is going to scale up. I'm going to create a new node for my application because those are just system node nodes. I'm going to create a new node for my application here to be able to run those pods. That's going to take some time. Okay, maybe 40 seconds. 50 seconds maximum. Adlab is very nice for that. You can you can see the load being created, 13 seconds, and then you can just see the workload being created as well. Then you're going to use this namespace where the help, the namespace that we decide to use. That's one thing. Another thing that you can do is, in the meantime, you can also create Helm, the package management for Kubernetes. And to do that, we can use the Asprey generate output format Helm. Very similar, we can skip using the same configuration, type the same password for encryption. I'm going to ask you the cluster that you want to run that. In this case, we don't need it because he's just generating the, the configuration first for Helm. 
and they're going to also to try to rebuild the image. Because AKS is on Azure and you need access, remember that you need to, once those images are on your Docker Hub, you have those two images here, you, you must um, push those images. You can do something like that. You can, you can just run, I can run that for you. Let's finish generating the Helm of oh, the the Helm shots. Then the Helm is going to be created also inside the folder. A new folder called Shot, and also the templates. A different way to do it using Helm is more templating, and the other option is more using customize. That's a no template option as well. Helm is very popular in production. And, and now I have help. How can I deploy help? To deploy help, remember, you need you need the help command line to be installed. But before, I, I want to make sure that I'm going to push the image. Okay. Even before I deploy to AKS, to AKS Automatic, you should do that to make sure that your image is there. If you decide to set your configuration for your container hash, probably... Aspirate is going to do that automatically for you. I'm doing manually in my in my use case here. But let's go for so my headlamp and CIKS automatic is already running like three minutes ago. All my pods are running. Why I like to use headlamp? Because you can just come here and you can click on the pod and do a port forward. And now you can test. Throw the Kubernetes on Azure, you can test your application. The same thing you can do for the for the dashboard. You can get a spy dashboard, you can do a port forward. And you can test from Azure Kubernetes service, you are doing a port forward from your machine. And you can play with the Kubernetes dashboard. Everything run on Azure. It's everything running on here. So if you wanna after you know, push your image. Finish the to do a Helm deployment. If you want to do Helm and do a deployment also on my AKS automatic, on this time I'm going to use a different uh, namespace. I'm going to use namespace weather and not weather have. There will be a duplication, will be a second deployment of my application on the same Azure Kubernetes service. Means that like two developers, they could be using the same cluster. If we run this command, I need just the where your shot is, the folder, and you need the file for the values. Values are pretty much the, the parameters of your Helm shot. If you go back there, I should have now another namespace for weather and weather hub. And the containers are being quickly being created there. Now it's what can be created. The same thing. Yep, everything's running. I should be able to do the same thing I did of the, of the first version. And I have now my Helm version of the deployment. With this, we we conclude. You can you can also remember you can do aspirate destroy. He can do also, you should destroy that. I want to clean up everything that I deleted. You can destroy everything. And at the end, you can do a, for the second deployment, you can do a Helm delete. And now you should have a clean, all the pods being terminated already. And the nice thing is, in a few seconds, this node will be deleted because you don't need that anymore and you don't pay for this anymore. Thank you so much. And please uh, get this QR code and follow all the resources of the .NET Aspire Day. See you next time.